Especially if you're coming into it, own what you can. Uh, meaning, like with name, image, and likeness, try to buy your domain, own that URL, create your own website, create your own logo. Don't wait for the universities to Welcome do it for you. Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And you all know that we we find we find some of the most interesting people. But at the same time, we find people that aren't talkers. We find people that are doers here on the Beyond the Ball podcast. So, you know, uh, just before we bring out today's guest, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really just excited about, you know, this time as we're just, just just in a time of new innovative ideas, a time of new ways of doing things. And uh, man, so uh, a, 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 as we all know, the focus of this show, if this is your first time listening, the focus of this show is to focus on stories, strategies and successes to ultimately help student athletes succeed beyond their degrees. So today, uh, w- w- without further ado, I, I want to go ahead and introduce uh, this this gentleman who's today's guest, he's not, not only just an entrepreneur, and we know in order to be an entrepreneur, you, you have to be a, a very special and gifted individual to, to go ahead and put in that work. So he's an entrepreneur. He's an NBPA and FIBA certified sports agent. And also he is the man of the Renaissance Sports Group. I want to go ahead and welcome in Mr. Anthony Johnson. Anthony, how, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing, my man? Welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. Thanks for having me, man. I love the intro. Making me making me sound good and important. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You you, you know it's necessary, man. It's, it's just so necessary. And, and, I, and I think uh, one of the things that's really important is just as, you know, some sometimes and, and I know uh, just looking at your bio and just just in us talking like, I mean, you're you're pretty accomplished. And, and I know sometimes when, when we've put in work and just like I know you're an entrepreneur and we're going to dive into that in just a little bit. But sometimes you get so focused in doing the work and so focused in helping people that, you know, sometimes you don't even take the time to look up and see all the work that you've done. So I want to just take that time and take that second man to go ahead and give you those flowers uh, and, and welcome you in. So, man, how, how, how you feeling today? Appreciate that, King. I'm, I'm feeling great, man. I'm excited. New years, new goals, new opportunities yeah. on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, man, De- definitely, definitely, definitely. So I know we're we're, we're chopping it up and we're we're just chatting because I know you know me and you cross paths uh, in in these clubhouse streets, man. So <laughs> you know you being out there from DC and you being like like an ultimate connector, man, Anthony. I, like I want you just just to bring us in, man, and just uh j- just just hit on a little bit of uh like a short synopsis of, of yourself because I know I didn't cover everything, but man, if you don't mind just just hitting on a short synopsis of, of something that I might miss when I introduce you well one shout out to the washingtonians but i am baltimore proud i'm not from dc um we're down they're down the road we're we're we're, we're friends or distant cousins i guess you could say but i'm i'm a, I'm a proud baltimorean um and i, I say that on my heart um just because i feel like our city needs a lot of positivity um so i try to be a light in the city and just try to be an example of people that can make it um beyond the world of sports well being a professional beyond dribbling a basketball being the athlete and kind of try to just be that example for people coming up in the city so i wasn't trying to correct you but also it's bigger than it's bigger than me it's a baltimore thing too hey man much respect much respect i'm all for paying homage and you know uh understanding that you know we, we everybody is is able to be successful based on you know the shoulders of the individuals that came before us and you know the, the people who inspired us so i'm I'm curious like, like who who inspired you to to do the work that that you're doing and, and even get in this space that is a complicated question um <laughs> so one man for me just being an agent right i was a former athlete. I played sports, but I realized earlier I kind of got light into the politics of the industry and I knew I wasn't going to go pro being an athlete. So I knew at an earlier age that I wanted to be pro in the business of sports in another capacity. So I just earlier kind of stumbled across the agent field and what it looked like. Um, so since high school, I knew I wanted to be a sports agent. 
Now, I think as I became more informed of the industry, I became more driven to pursue that career path. Meaning once I so I went to college, Maryland, I went to University of Maryland, by the way, for my undergraduate, Morgan State for my MBA. Um, but when I went to University of Maryland, they didn't even have a sports management program. And I had they had a program called individual studies and it required me to uh First, in order to be in this program, you had to get approved by like the faculty and staff advisors. You had to present a proposal, find a faculty advisor, do a whole bunch of extra stuff that the typical student didn't have to do. So I had to do all of this just to become a sports management major. So earlier on, that made me more serious about my academic pursuits in that mm -hmm. career path. Right mm -hmm. um, now, in doing that and pursuing that degree through the individual studies program. They also required you to do a senior thesis. Um, my thesis was on um, the disparities of African-Americans in the, the sports industry and managerial roles. So then um, I always was interested into, in, in a career path. Then the program kind of made me focus. And then once I started to do the research and understand the disparities in the industry, it created a different type of drive in me to be like, yo, we're dominating these sports. We're dominating these industries. Why aren't we in these managerial roles, these agent roles, these owner roles? And that, for me, being very much intentional about empowering our people and being in spaces that we should be in, especially ones that we dominate, that lit a greater fire in me outside of me just wanting to be an agent because I thought sports was cool and I wanted to make money doing it. Um, So that and then, again, the more I started to look at the layers, the more barriers of entry that was kind of created for people of color in these spaces. It just kept lighting that fire and that fire was just getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, for me, I need to not only be an agent, but create a movement um, with my agency as well. Wow. Wow, man. OK, so understanding that and you being an entrepreneur, where did that play a role in like in in this journey and, you know, up? up in your story to like where you are now. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Great. Um, <laughs> so I think entrepreneurship, we all have a little bit of entrepreneurship in this, um, but it's just a matter of just like, are we willing to kind of go through and follow through that process? So the role it played for me, I always knew I wanted to be an agent, but I also was an entrepreneur at heart from selling candies in middle school <laughs> to so on. So I always had that entrepreneurial spirit and that kind of like that hustling mentality. So I seen opportunities and um, some of them, I felt like that they were profitable or potentially scalable. I rocked with them. Um, most of my businesses were just simply providing solutions to problems that I recognized. And I seen that they could kind of be built out. So I created a nonprofit. I seen the issue with men um, not necessarily networking and kind of building in my city and the surrounding areas. So I seen it wasn't something that's targeting my millennial demographic. So I created something. I had an issue with uh, um, some things around accessories as far as men um, making lapel flowers and boutonnieres and brooches. And I didn't like that. My suits, when I had lapel pins, I used to put holes in my garment. So I created an alternative to that with magnets. Um, and that's just how I just I felt like most businesses are created by somebody saying, I wish I had this. And someone actually creating a solution of what that this could be. Um, and that's kind of how my business is manifested. And I think it transitions very much into being an agent because in this day and age, with the modern athlete, a lot of them are brands as well as just individuals. And I think in order to build a brand, you have to know the inner workings of a brand or they're naturally entrepreneurs themselves. Athletes are more likely to be risk takers. And a lot of times you have people giving them insights on how they can matriculate through their career or be a risk taker. And they've only learned it from right, reading a book not necessarily doing it themselves. And I was fortunate enough to have had some success. You know, I'm not going to say I had millions of dollar companies, but my accessory business was in multiple stores throughout the East Coast. And I've had some some success in doing it. So I can at least speak to it from some experience. Yeah, man, I think you really hit, hit on something major. And I, I, I mean, I don't want to minimize it, nor do I want to brush past it. But you just <laughs> you just said you found the problems and then you just created the solution for it. Because, I mean, I have some suit jackets in the closet now and these are nice suit jackets, nice sports coats. And they got the little holes in them because every time right before I did it, I would just bite the bullet. And I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I'm have to do it anyway. And then just <laughs> poke it through. But I mean, I wish I knew. I, I, I wish I knew you, you had this going before. Some magnet pals, man. I get you some magnet pals. That's what we call it. Some magnetic lapel flowers. I get you some magnet pals, man. Get you right. 
Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, your suits is what we used to say. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah, man, man. Shout out to Magna Pels for sponsoring this episode, man. Because I'm, I'm gonna have to go buy me some, man. I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to get right, man. Because I saw, I mean, you, you got, you got Ray Lewis wearing your stuff, and you know, you, you got, you got some other, uh, other amazing, just like celebrities, just, just rocking the, the Magna Pels. So. I mean, hey, when, I, I guess when you when you solve when you solve problems, then I mean, a lot of other people are out here looking for the same solutions. So yeah, I, man, it also gave you gave me insight because I had uh, brand ambassadors and stuff like that. So it kind of gave me some earlier insights into like how if you maybe are going to deal with your client and they want to brands want everybody to be influencers now. So mm-hmm. I can understand like potentially what that agreement looks like or what would be the dynamics or what type of relationship I know that I would have wanted from a brand. So when my brands will be engaging my clients or future clients, I can kind of think that on both sides of the spectrum now. Mm, man, you're you're definitely a renaissance man. You're, 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 you're uh-huh. definitely very, very yeah. diverse. You like the name. Yeah, the name is fitting, man. I try. I try to. Um, the renaissance man is I, I like it. I like it not only so to provide context for those of you who don't know, our agency is called Renaissance Sports Group, right? And um, part of that name is intentional. I think it represents who I am, but also represents the type of clients that we're trying to work with. Um, and the simple aspect of you'll hear people say more than an athlete. Right. Um, and essentially, we're trying to create renaissance athletes who are very athletes who are very well versed in a lot of different um, skill sets and specializations. Um, so I'm intentional about who we're interviewing, who we're engaging, but not only creating a renaissance athlete, fostering a renaissance movement um for of athletes in this space because when we think head renaissance when it's particularly when it comes to black people we're talking we're thinking like harlem renaissance and black excellence and all this other stuff and we want i want you to think that same thing about our sports renaissance you know so man man so so was that the initial focus when you because i know you hit on it a, l- a little bit earlier when you were talking about you know creating a movement and and ultimately just just putting things in place for for that to uh, I, I guess get legs and get feet. Like was was that the initial uh, was that the initial focus, or, or or was that part of the focus? Because just like you were talking about, like with the Harlem Renaissance and and different things like that, or was that something that just came about just you know as, as you were just going through and as you were just building? Well, the I mean the name was the name initially tied into the creating the movement. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, so again, being an agent for me was big and just shining the clients. It was about really legacy building not just before me, but also for our people. I think people really don't understand the impact that athlete, a, agents could have on athletes. Um, at the end of the day, the agents work for the athletes, but at the same time, the athletes are big drivers, influences of our communities, um, as well as for other communities, cash cash cows, right? A lot mm. of other communities are profiting off of our black dollars, and when the dollars leave our communities, we know it does never return. So that age, having those agents who are ten, essentially driving or suggesting or guiding some of that money, guiding some of that cash flow, being intentional about, you know, patronizing our own businesses, um, whether it be a tailor, a realtor, accountant to to the local uh, community organization, a fundraiser that you want to give to that can create a cycle and really create some communal change that I think a lot of times people undervalue and undervalue the potential impact of an agent, a manager, or the team that's associated with those athletes. Mm. And that creates a renaissance type of movement. Man. Man, that's powerful. That's, that's Man, that's really powerful. So just staying just, just consistent as, as, as we're talking talking about just, you know, th- this one facet of you just in regard to, to being, being a sports agent. Anthony, what's one of the misconceptions that people have of, of sports agents? Because, I mean, typically when, when I hear people talk about sports agents, I mean, uh, 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 the majority of the times, I, like I hear the, I hear the bad things, but th- but it's very few times that, that you hear the good things. So, like, can, can, can you just can you just unpack that? You don't necessarily have to give a misconception. But I mean, but, but you can just talk about what, what people are, are like not seeing, because I, I mean, I know that, you know, just in this industry that there are probably it's probably 20 to one, if not more good versus bad, but the bad is always, you know, highlighted and illuminated. Yeah. And I think even when it comes to people of color, it's already highlighted and illuminated, but it's, it's think of it times two or three when it comes to us. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I would say the biggest thing is I feel like they feel like every agent does not have your child's intention, best intentions at heart. 
Um, and I just think that is something that I think is hard to kind of fight through, um, especially when a lot of times you're coming in with pre- a lot of times there are preconceived notions about who you are as an agent. Um, and particularly, as I said, sometimes even internally, we have those issues or struggles that we're battling as black people. Right. Um, we feel like they're trying to hustle you. You're trying to take advantage of you or whatever the case may be. And some of it is tr- it's not like unvalidated. And you get what I'm saying? But I think sometimes we kind of take bad uh, associations a lot of times internally and generalize them to all as opposed to looking at the bad as an isolated incident. No different than we would look at the good as an isolated incident. So I say that all that to say. For every bad apple, there are a lot more good. Kind of echo the sentiments that you were you were talking to, Jonathan. Um, and I think it is truth that truth that a lot of agents are um, have been very transactional as far as how they engage with their clients, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's meaning they, they they get you to sign a deal and they don't really provide as much value in the back end. But I think a lot of times people never really look at to one what those agents who were doing that. What did what did the majority of them look like? Right. And uh, the, uh, and understanding, are you applying those generalizations to that majority, to the people that, that are sitting in front of you now? A lot of times we don't do that. Um, so I think there are good agents. I think you just have to figure out uh, what's their intentions, but also just look at the conscious of the character and who they were even before they became an agent. So for me, like, as I said, I think my entrepreneurship stuff matters because I was giving back. I was intentional about empowering our communities, empowering our people, being an entrepreneur before I sat in front of you. And I can, I have pretty good track record that anybody who's done business with me for the most part, they ain't going to have but nothing bad to say in that in that vein. So I think that's what we really need to look at, to not to like put the stereotypes to the side, look at the character and integrity of those individuals, especially when it comes to the black agents um, and be intentional about not necessarily giving us anything but at least offering opportunities um, and allowing us to prove our value. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to, so I want to stir the pot, but I, I have to, I have to ask you. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. (laughs) Well, well, I mean, but, but why in business do do you feel that as, you know, as, as people who are black and Brown, why are we more critical of our own versus people who don't look like us in why, like why? Why do you th- why you think that is? This might just be like tough love. You know what I'm saying? Like you know how <laughs> we feel like we can we can be tougher on each other than we can be other people than other entities. I mm-hmm. mean, um, like you you gonna tell the real to your cousin before you might tell it to the pub. So much you don't know because your cousin you feel like you can connect to them. And we feel like everybody's each other's cousin because we all at this one big cookout, right? But we don't really sometimes understand like how those that mindset impacts the circulation of dollars in our community. And it's cool to be tough and it's cool to be honest. It's cool to be transparent, but also understand the bigger picture um, as far as just, which is empowering our communities. So it's just a little tough love. Um, and <laughs> as well as some infrastructure that's been obviously put in place to kind of make us kind of despise or dislike or compete with each other consistently, too. Fair enough. Fair enough. Man, that's a good way of answering that question, Anthony. That's a good way of answering that. I, ne- I never even thought about it like that. I never thought about it like that. But yeah, man, I mean, I I, I certainly hear, hear where you're coming from. And I, I definitely uh, appreciate appreciate your, your your thoughts there. So so, man, a- Anthony, at, like a- after after all, all that you've done, I mean, I, I like I know you've been been in this industry for for for, for 10 years. You know, you t- 10, 10 years you, you've been, you know, getting after it, ha- having entrepreneurship efforts. You you. You know, you you won the you you were awarded the Black Enterprise Modern Man of the Year in 2018. You know, you're you're a top 35 millennial influencer, and I mean, you 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 received a host of other awards. So, man, what's what's next, Anthony? The movement, man. I, um, the goal is so we're I've been in the uh, in the industry for 10, 15 years, sports marketing, social media. Mm. But it's a lot of things on the rise, and particularly when it comes to student athletes with name, image, and likeness, um, really figuring out what that looks like, the lay of that land. But secondly, um, I've only been an agent for two years. Uh, just recently got certified a couple, not long ago to, to represent players abroad, overseas as well. So just trying to ex- expand, expand upon that. I received I have two clients for brands, two clients who are um, athletes, trying to get some more clients as well as NBA clients. To kind of just extend the Renaissance brand, extend the Renaissance reach, 
Um, just really change the culture and what an athlete looks like, foster more Renaissance athletes. So it's a lot of things we're trying to do. And I guess to, sum, to summarize all of what I'm saying is to really create that movement um, in the basketball world and the sports world um, and try to forecast what name, image, and likeness is going to be and try to put my foot in the water as far as the esports space a little bit. I'm trying mm. to learn a little bit more about that. But I'm just right now just trying to be a sponge and make the right relationships. Yeah, man. Wow. You hit you hit on something with, with that esport. We're gonna have to get on that on another episode, man. I, because I mean, I like I've I've seen, you know, over the past few years, I would I would hear about like certain people investing in esports over here and then over there. And then now we look up and I mean, the industry just has exploded. And these, you know, these young men and young women are getting these sponsorship deals and they're getting it more dollars than some of these people that are, have been in, you know, some other physical sports. Uh, to where you know you're exerting all this other kind of energy, but you know I I, I don't I don't want to go down there, man. But I, I I definitely appreciate you you taking the time, Anthony, to hop on today on Beyond the Ball, and I I, I want to almost get ready to let you go, but before I do, I, I told you before I, I got to run you through the two minute drill. Let's have some fun. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and, and the two minute drill for those out there, it might be your first time listening. The two minute drill is, is where I, I ask Anthony just about a handful of questions. Uh, you know, we're going we're going to just get to see a different side, different angle of him. And then from there, we know we, we wrap it up. We, we put a bow on it. We, we tie our shoes and then, and then we call it a day. So um, Anthony, are you ready? I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Oh, man. Here we go. Favorite food? Pizza. What kind of pizza? Chicken jalapeno peppers something sweet maybe like some hot honey or barbecue sauce something on there oh, I like sweet. yeah you was gonna shortchange me just with the pizza that, that's a good recipe <laughs> right there man uh what's the what, what's the last book you read um athletes of brands too mm. jeremy darlow yeah shout out to jeremy darlow <laughs> what uh what, what's what's your favorite podcast earn your leisure mm, that is a good one that that is that that is a really good one man that, that's that's a really good one okay okay uh the most underrated cereal honey nut cheerios mm, mm, okay okay it can, yeah, be that's a snack. it can be a cereal it can you can do a little bit of everything with honey nut and it's a healthier alternative never goes that's out true style. that's true never goes out of style it's classic <laughs> that's true it's like i mean regular cheerios it's like classic, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. G G, G nights is my as my cousin calls them. And then uh, the so the the last question I want to ask you is well, oh no no, I got two more, two more, two more. Uh -oh. Okay, so what so what's your Netflix go to show of preference? Netflix go to show. All right now, I'm watching Power, but Power that's not on Netflix. Hold on, let me think about that one. Netflix is Netflix. I feel like be late. You know what I'm saying? Netflix is like oh, a season man. behind a lot of times, so it's kind of tough. But if you're just thinking of a show, I'm like I'm watching. I'm on power real heavy. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I don't know, and I like. I don't even know if that's on there. Is is uh, billions on Netflix? Nah, bi nah, bi billions is Showtime. So okay. you just let us know that you got that good. You, you let us know you got that good cable, that fire stick. <laughs> Bobby Axelrod is my guy, man. I like him. I like him. Oh he's, man, he's a shark. He's a shark. Oh golly, that's too funny. And then, and then, the last question. You can feel free to take your time on this one. But what's one tip okay. that you want to give to a student athlete? One tip. Um, that's a great question. One I would say, uh, especially if you're going, coming into it, own what you can. Uh, meaning like with name image and likeness try to buy your domain own that url create your own website create your own logo don't wait for the universities to do it for you um i would say that that would be my piece of advice on what you can now don't depend on the universities Ooh, anthony you just dropped the gym you just <laughs> man you just dropped the gym oh my goodness wow wow you just you That's killed the game with that one right there. Real talk, man. man. Name him is like this, but think it's scary, man. On what you can, man. Wow, you killed. But like it, you want to speak on that one? Like you want to speak on that one, man? Man, nah, I'm I'm, I'm just blown away how, how how good that is. Like I mean that like like that's that's pure because I mean 
I mean, you've seen the article about like when, when they show potential projections for like if you're a division one, uh, like power five type school and then mm-hmm. go across the swipe and then you see the individual of, of their whatever they potentially could make on on the other end. Like if you're not major D1, like junior college or D3, stuff like that. But what you just said with them buying the domain and getting the URL. Oh, my goodness. And Anthony, I don't want to touch it, man. You 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 kill it. I, I, I don't want to touch it, man. You you, you went in. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, 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 leave, I'm gonna leave that alone. But uh, the la- last thing I want to ask you is just a little bonus. Who who is the next guest that you would like to see me interview on Beyond the Ball? Hmm. I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna go to Clubhouse because you know the Clubhouse is really where you gotta you can find everybody, man. Um. <sighs> I, I have so many, like really just in full transparency. Um, but I would say my partner, um, her name's Chris the Black Techie. Chris mm. is awesome. She really taps into like SMS marketing, working with some pro athletes on how they could really leverage their influence. Um, she's also a Baltimore native. She's work but she's working with some NFL guys, pro guys, doing some great work. I think Chris would be a really good person to, to talk about how le- athletes can leverage their you know, their brains be on the ball and SMS is more aligned with the future mm. than, even more than email. So I think she would be dope. Wow. Yeah, man. You're just going, you're going to come and blow the spot up like that. That's what you're going to do. You gonna come <laughs> <Sorry. in? laughs> oh, fuck, man. oh man, man. And Anthony, I, I definitely appreciate you, man, taking the time to, to, to stop through, man. Just, just please go ahead and let, let people know where they can find you as I have your stuff. I, I have your, you know, I have your social links scrolling, but just, just, just say it for the people who might be, you know, who might be listening uh, through the audio. Okay, definitely, man. Let's lock in. Let's stay socially connected. Uh, my Instagram is entrepreneur, just like the, the word entrepreneur, but the first letter is an A. My Twitter is entrepreneur number three. But also um, follow us in Renaissance Sports Group. So it's just R-E-N Sports Group on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and it's Renaissance Sports Group on Facebook, but R-E-N Sports Group. So let's tap in, lock in, send me some clients if you have them, uh, and leave it at that. <laughs> Most definitely, most definitely, man. Well, Anthony, I, I definitely appreciate you, man, stopping by the show, blowing up the show, man. Oh man, man. I, mean, I appreciate you for having me for sure, man. I, I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, we could we could do this another time whenever you, whenever you want to lock in again, man. Yeah, man, for sure. I can't wait to get to get the opportunity to be able to do these live, man. I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting looking back to getting to do these live, man. That, that'd be dope to you know do like a like at a sports con or something like that whenever whenever yeah. that time comes. But yeah, we're gonna manifest it. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, man. For sure. Pretty soon we're gonna need an agent too. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> there you go. Yo, let's let's get it. Let's get it, man. But thank you once again. And uh all, all the ballers out there, man, who are listening, who are tapped in, y'all be sure, be sure to connect with Anthony. Be sure to follow him on the social platforms because man, j- just the things I, I hear him talking about and just the way that he connects people i know he's up to doing some amazing things and he's really about what he says in regards to creating a movement so follow him and then be sure to, to tap in and, and subscribe to the podcast uh, apple podcast and leave a helpful rate and review because I, I, I know there's a lot of people out there who are wanting to get in the space and wanting to either become a sports agent or wanting to get just in the industry of athletics um in sports so y'all be sure be sure to to follow anthony shoot him a dm let him know uh if what he shared really impacted you but until next time ballers this is jonathan jones signing out on beyond the ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree